Hello, and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone, and today we will be examining one of Europa's more almost familiar creatures, the Moloch. Now please, sit back, relax, and let us begin. In terms of Earth-based biology, the Moloch is a fascinating subject upon first glance. One may figure this being not too different from the Portuguese man-o-war, a strange colonial organism, though this seems to be more of a product of convergent evolution, or perhaps the more correct term would be a galactic evolutionary commonality, as the two are barely related past looks alone. As in character, the Moloch is more akin to a whale in social behavior. Section 1. Anatomy of the Moloch if one were to strip away the shells and tentacles of a Moloch, all that would be left is something that looks like a human brain, tinged with pink and brownish hues. This core is the softest part of the Moloch, and often being the target priority if a Moloch needs to be disposed of. The core is protected by a Moloch's rigorous shell, which sits upon some of the toughest armor of the European fauna, only outclassed by the armor of the Endworm and the Watcher. The Moloch shell is immune to most rounds used by the average submarine, only heavier rounds such as submarines equipped with railguns or military-type pulse lasers can bore through the shell's tough exterior to expose the soft flesh underneath. The shell also acts as the Moloch's primary weapon when presumably attacking both rival Molochs and submarines. In this manner, impact from the hardened shell inflicts tremendous damage on European coalition vessels, with mariners being advised to avoid Molochs when possible, as a well-placed hit can result in a submarine possibly falling beyond a sustainable depth. Within the shell sits not only the core of the Moloch, but its means of propulsion as well. While passive, the Moloch is rather unthreatening, merely drifting around using its front legs to adjust its position. But when it detects something as a threat, a sack within the Moloch swells up, taking in large amounts of water, then using it to quickly jet towards its target. The Moloch uses this method in quick succession to easily overtake unprepared submarines and fauna. Owing to its jellyfish-esque appearance, the Moloch has two rather different sets of tentacles. Resting just below the shell's edge are two sets of three on each side of the Moloch. In truth, these sets are more akin to jointed legs one would find on a lobster or crab. The legs have three sections leading down to a fourth that is an almost blade-like protrusion. The Moloch has been observed using these as a form of retaliation against small targets, though only in a fashion to stave off and deter rather than kill. Otherwise, a Moloch may only use these jointed legs as a form of stationary device, hooking onto a cliffside when eating, or resting, or perhaps simply to corral their offspring. The second set of tentacles are also quite interesting, as they are more akin to lapets, as they are hanging pieces of flesh rather than a true tentacle. At first glance, these long strands of flesh would bind one of the stinging strings that a jellyfish uses. Yet, upon encounter with them, a diver will occur no discomfort from them, so what a Moloch uses them for is quite a mystery. Though there are a few ways they could be reasonably used. 1. Due to the size, perhaps it can be used as a form of early shelter for the Moloch's young, in which they could take cover under the parent, latching on with tiny legs as the parent moves around at least until they are large enough to swim on their own in the European oceans. 2. It could possibly also serve as a decoy system, as when these parts are shot, they easily fall away, so perhaps they can be used as a tool to fool larger predators from the abyss, such as the Tribdis, in which chasing a Moloch would get a mouthful of this non-vital skirt area and possibly leave or at least distract the predator long enough while the Moloch retreats to shallower waters. Unlike many other creatures of Europa, the Moloch is truly blind in the visual sense. While most other fauna have some form of eyes, like the Hammerhand Watcher, or have a simple way up to detect light, like that of the Mud Raptor, the Moloch simply can't perceive light, as submarines have been documented, simply moving past the Moloch without any sign of aggression, despite lights dotting the exterior of the vessel. This has to do with how the Moloch interacts with the world, which for them is echolocation. It is unknown why, but sonar used by submarines seem to be a source of irritation for Molochs within a certain range. As when heard, Molochs will charge straight towards the source with the intent to kill. But why does a normally passive creature become enraged when a sonar becomes too close? 
Perhaps it may be as simple as the sonar somehow causes pain to the Moloch due to being sensitive to noise. Or perhaps the sonar emits sounds of a unknown Moloch encroaching on territory that it shouldn't. The oddest yet most intriguing feature of the Moloch is the EMP feature found within its bigger variant, the Black Moloch. Unlike when the Moloch itself rams into a submarine, repeated attacks by a Black Moloch can cause severe electrical damage to submarines, truly leaving them dead in the water. Aside from the obvious dangers, why would any creature have access to something that can fry the electronics of a submarine. The only reasonable assertion that comes to mind is a deterrent of some form, as there are many creatures on Earth that hunt using electricity, such as dolphins and sharks using electrical fields to find prey. So it isn't unreasonable that perhaps the Latcher, Charybdis, or even the Endworm use specialized cells to aid in their hunt, and such a shock of electricity could confuse them long enough for a black Moloch to get away if not outright kill the larger predator through damage to the brain or other vital systems. Much like the Watcher, it is hard to discern how a Moloch eats, though due to its passive nature, its diet may reflect that of Earth's sperm whales or basking sharks, in which the Moloch will suck in large amounts of water and then push it through a specialized filter that grabs small or even microscopic animals for nutrients. The Social Relations and Reproduction of a Moloch It is unknown if Molochs either lay eggs or give some form of live birth, but what is very well understood is they care very deeply for their young. In early infancy, the Moloch's brood might stay in the direct care of a parent, possibly inhabiting the skirt area of the Moloch for extra protection, or being secluded to a small cave in which the parent won't stray too far from. Once the Moloch's young are big enough, they seem to wander in a 10 to 20 meter radius, though never too far from the parent Moloch's protection. Though puzzlingly enough, they are utterly defenseless when away from a parent, simply swimming around aimlessly in groups of large as six members, playing with the other infant Molochs. Though despite what would appear as easy prey to most, when threatened the infants will let out a cry, so to speak one that's calling for nearby Mollocks. The parent or possibly related nearby Mollocks will rush to the cry to quickly defend their young and drive away or kill the predator. Mollocks are so defensive of their young that they will even put themselves between their offspring and the threat, no matter how hurt they are themselves. This was observed in what could only be described as a harrowing situation that ended up with a traumatized security officer and the nigh retirement of an entire deep diving salvage crew. Therapist Log Oshan, Hydrothermal Waste Outpost. The gunner of the Steel Sweepers came into this mandatory session with a glazed look and pale skin. I attempted to ask him a set of questions like the others, though he was far less responsive than the rest of his crew though this is probably due to the fact that he was the one ordered to fire the topside railgun at a group of perceived hostiles. It would be duly noted here that Captain Mofito seems to be prone to paranoia, though who isn't a bit jumpy down here in these depths? Though, as I understand it, the response to the gunfire wasn't the typical thresher or even spineling swarms well known at this depth. The first round fired had hit a group of Moloch young, and the second round hit a Moloch that had put itself in between the young and the submarine. Though a Moloch is often perceived as a threat, and the gunner panicked and fired a third round, then everything went silent. The following is an altered voice recording of the gunner. I wish I hadn't seen it. I reacted down here instinctually. Down here it's kill or the entire crew dies, but I couldn't continue firing. They weren't even fighting back. The Moloch weren't even concerned with us attacking. They were just gathered tightly around their young, forming a wall between us and them. One was even bleeding gallons of blood into the open ocean, but it was dead set on protecting its young. The captain told me to keep firing, but I, I just couldn't. This is all I managed to get out of the gunner before he crumbled into a crying fit. I recommend that the captain of the steel sweepers be put on leave until further notice, and that he and the rest of his crew be shipped back to shallower waters, where they can get some better help and can hopefully cope with what they've experienced. 
even though I'm not sure I'll be able to. Side note, I also recommend that a research outpost be set up nearby. With the loss of communication with Earth and conflict with the Jovian Separatists have left resources tight, to survive here in the long term we better need to understand the creatures living down here. I must honestly thank anyone that has been listening to my videos as of recent. Last I looked, I had 85 subscribers, and just a far more amount than I had of recent, so thank you to everyone that is listening. And as a side note, I must apologize for some of the audio in this video. I'm in a slightly different setup. Some, I'm somewhere down in Florida with a different room, so it sounds different. I've amplified and fixed what I can, but if anyone has any issues, I apologize. Anyway, thank you for listening, and I will see you all next time. Be safe and have a good day.